This video is about matrix multiplication and its properties. Not to be confused with scalar multiplication of matrices, which we've covered, matrix multiplication is when you're actually multiplying matrices together and it's kind of weird. So let's start our notes with the definition. We can only multiply matrix A with matrix B, which could be denoted by just writing A, B together, and again, typically capital letters are used to define a matrix, so we have capital A and B here. You could just write A, B together, or you could write A dot B, just like a dot might be used for multiplication of real numbers. Well, it turns out you can only multiply matrix A with matrix B if the number of columns in the first matrix matches the number of rows in the second matrix. Now the reason why this is the case will become evident as we actually demonstrate some of this multiplication, but keep that in mind. So we have to have some matching numbers and we'll make sure that's true in our example too. Okay, secondly, the product AB will have an order consisting of the number of rows from the first matrix by the number of columns from the second matrix. Okay, there are way too many words in this definition already. It's going to help, I think, a lot when we actually just look at an example but these words are true nonetheless. So here's an example of what I mean. If I have matrix A, which let's write out the order of it, it would be three rows by two columns. And if I could read down those rows real, real quickly here, matrix A is two, four, negative three, seven, nine, negative one. And then we have matrix B, which is a two by two matrix. Again, reading across those rows from top to bottom would be six, negative two, 3, 1, then when we, f first of all, according to the definition above, these inner numbers, so the number of columns from the first matrix would have to match the number of rows in the second matrix, and of course these match 2 and 2. Then after we multiply this together, it turns out that the number of rows from the first matrix will be grouped up with the number of columns from the second matrix. Now, the actual process of multiplying matrices together is a little involved. I'm going to do my best to show it, possibly with some colors to help. But let's keep this in mind. In fact, let's already anticipate that we're expecting a 3 by 2 result. Uh, or at least that should be the order or the size of the result. Now, we haven't actually done the multiplication yet, but let's just kind of note that so I can go back and clean up some of these colors for the sake of demonstrating the multiplication. Now, since this matrix multiplication process can be a little tricky to explain, at least through a screen like this, I'm going to go a little overboard on this first example. And if we already understand that our result is going to be a 3 by 2 matrix, then I'm going to draw actually just a very rigid 3 by 2 box. And we're just going to use this box as a frame for our result. I think it's just going to help. We'll, we'll turn it back into a matrix, okay? But for now, we're just going to use this frame to understand that, remember, this is a 3 rows, 2 column result that we're expecting. Um, but I think that this grid will really kind of keep things rigid enough so we understand what's going on. In order to get the top left entry of our result, okay, we're just going to focus on one thing at a time. This top left entry, which I'll do in green, is going to come, okay, now remember that's top left. So it's going to come from the top row times the left column in our matrices. Now, how does that happen? Well, so really we multiply the 2 times the 6 to give us 2 times 6. And then we're going to add the second part, which is the 4 times the 3. 4 times 3. So we add those two parts together. Now, if I move on to the middle row of the left column then we're going to use the middle row of the first matrix times the left column of the second matrix. Okay, so you can see pretty quickly this, these colors are going to get chaotic, so I'm only going to do a couple of these with the colors to illustrate it. If you follow the same pattern, remember we want the first entry in that 
row, the negative 3, times the first entry in the column, which is the 6. So that would be a negative 3 times 6. And then we add the second entry in that row with the second entry in that column. So 7 times 3. Okay, it looks complicated when you're looking at the end result or me trying to show it through the screen like this with some colors. Once you get the hang of this, there's really not much to it. Let me try to illustrate the rest of this just using one color to see if it, you can catch on with it. So now let's talk about the bottom row of the first column. Bottom row, left column. We're going to use the bottom row of our matrix times the left column. So 9 times 6 will go first. And then we're going to add negative 1 times 3. Okay, and then of course we'll be combining all these like terms in arithmetic to get a summarized result. But this is the pattern of it. Now, you might uh, suspect that to get the second column in our matrix, we simply do the exact same thing, but now we're going to use the second column in that second matrix. So, across now the top row of the second column, we'll do 2 times negative 2 plus 4 times 1. And that's, again, using the same pattern. There's the 2 times the negative 2, and then the 4 times the 1. Same pattern as we did on the left side, but now we're using the right column to get the right side of this matrix. Okay, moving on now to the middle row of the right column. We'll go similarly, negative 3 times negative 2 plus 7 times 1. And lastly, now using the, the bottom row of the first matrix times the right column of the second, we'll have 9 times negative 2 plus negative 1 times positive 1. Okay, now you can probably imagine that, that this could turn into a, a mess very quick. You're probably already thinking it's a mess, but this gets crazy if we have very large matrices involved. The point right now is simply to understand how the multiplication works. We're not going to do this with enormous matrices by hand, okay? But we would need to understand how the multiplication works. We cannot do every bit of matrix multiplication with a calculator because sometimes we're going to have variables in a matrix, and so the calculator won't multiply a number times a variable and give us a result, which means we have to understand the process, and that's exactly what this will do. All right, so now we're just going to take our rigid box, remember, which isn't really the way we write a matrix, and we're going to translate it now into a matrix, which is three rows and two columns. And we'll just go down the list here. So in the green top left entry, remember that was 2 times 6 plus 4 times 3? Okay, well, that's really 12 plus 12, which means 24 will be the top left entry in that matrix. If I go down the rest of these entries in corresponding fashion, we should end up with the result matrix finally as a, again, we're expecting a 3 by 2 matrix, and that's exactly what we've been doing and using. You can see why the orders all matter here. Um, you had to multiply the rows in the first matrix by the columns in the second, which means, again, all those numbers had to match, as we said earlier. Our 3 by 2 result matrix, reading across each row, would be 24, 0, 3, 13, 51, negative 19. I'd also like to demonstrate that of course a graphing calculator can handle this calculation quite well. So let's go ahead and turn on our graphing calculator and I've already typed in these matrices. Remember if you hit second and then the matrix button um, you can edit your matrices. So I've typed in matrix A and B as they are in this problem and so that they're stored in as matrix A and B. So if we want to do some actual math with them we can quit out of this. So second quit and then we can do matrix multiplication by getting the matrices in the pictures. So I'll go second matrix. I'm going to hit enter for matrix A. And then we can multiply that with the multiplication symbol key um, by matrix B. So I hit times. And then for matrix B, I go second matrix and then select matrix B. So now it has like matrix A and B in these little boxes in our screen with a multiplication symbol in between. If I hit enter, it will spit out the result matrix. And if we compare that with the matrix we got by hand, you'll find that every corresponding entry matches. That fits our definition of equivalent matrices we did a little bit ago. 
And so that's confirming that indeed A times B is the result we got. Let's now discuss some properties of matrix multiplication. Remember, we already discussed uh, properties of addition and subtraction of matrices and of scalar multiplication, but now let's discuss some properties of actual matrix multiplication. So let's let A, B, and C be matrices. We have the associative property from multiplication, which is, as you might expect, you can multiply matrix A times matrix B plus C, but where those are grouped in parentheses, and the result will end up the same as if you were grouping A and B together and then multiplying by matrix C. So that's what you might expect from an associative property, but given how strange matrix multiplication really is, if you look back at what we just did, um, it, does, it shouldn't seem obvious that those properties are true, okay? But you can certainly prove that they are by the definition of multiplication as we just did. Secondly, it also turns out that the distributive property works for matrices. In other words, if I have matrix A times matrix B plus C that's grouped in parentheses, it turns out that the result is, as I might expect, matrix AB plus AC. And of course, it also works if you're distributing matrix A from the right side of the parentheses. Again, these properties we take for granted at this point because we've, see, we've seen them so much in arithmetic, but really, they're not obvious, especially when we're dealing with matrices. But they are true nonetheless. Let's try an example where we want to perform the matrix operation by hand or explain why it's not possible. The first example um, has two matrices kind of smashed right next to each other. The first matrix is a two rows by three columns matrix. And let me just read across the first row. It's two, one, two. The second row is six, three, four. And then right next to it, of course, indicating multiplication as we are used to with variables and numbers. Um, when you just put matrices right next to each other, you're implying multiplication. So directly to the right, we have a matrix that has three rows by two columns. If I could read down those rows, um, the first is one, negative two, then three, six, and then negative two, zero. Now, the implied operation here is multiplication. The first thing to check anytime you're trying to multiply matrices is whether the, whether the orders all line up. Remember, the middle numbers, when you put these orders next to each other, need to match, and of course they do. That means that the outer numbers, the 2 and the 2, those would turn out to be the result of the final matrix or the order of the final matrix. So we're expecting a two by two result in this matrix. Now, we have to stay organized and understand how the uh, matrix multiplication works. So let's do that. I'm gonna leave a rather large two by two space for our matrix and see if we can get through this because there's a lot of entries in these matrices to put in. Now, let me just kind of highlight one of the, the ways we're gonna put these together to get the result just to remind you and then I'm just gonna do them um, all without highlighting in different colors. So we're going to multiply the top row of the first matrix times the left column of the second matrix to get the top left entry of our new result. So that will be 2 times 1 plus 1 times 3 plus 2 times negative 2 and that's all got to fit in this top left entry. So that's why I had to write a little big here. Okay, so that's going to work out for top left according to that pattern. That's just using the definition of matrix multiplication that we did. Of course, in our 2 by 2 result, the bottom left entry is going to be um, computed with the bottom row of the first matrix times the left column of the second. And so I'm trying to use some colors just to remind you of how the definition works for multiplication that we did above, but we'll actually just summarize the result quickly here. So summarizing all these calculations, the result matrix should end up as a two by two matrix, which is one, two, seven, six. And again, that's just all using the definition of matrix multiplication, which has one example calculation written above here in orange, um, but the rest of the entries would be found the same way. And that, of course, could be verified by a graphing calculator.
Let's consider another example where we want to perform the matrix operation on a graphing calculator or explain why it is not possible. Now this example has two matrices, A and B. A is a two by two matrix and it's defined as two, negative five, zero, seven. That's going left to right, top down. Matrix B is a two row by three column matrix and the first row is two, negative five halves, zero. Second row is zero, two, negative three. Now, the expression we're asked to find is B minus five A. So, if you think carefully about what's going on here, uh, I don't think it'll be too hard to figure out that this is not going to work. Can you see why? Well, in the second part of this expression, the five A, that's just scalar multiplication. Um, which is fine. They're, they're, all you're doing is multiplying all the entries in matrix A by 5 for that expression. But the bigger picture is asking us to subtract that result from matrix B. But as we just saw above, when you do scalar multiplication with matrix A, it does not change the order of the matrix. It's going to be a 2 by 2 before and after that. But matrix B is a 2 by 3, and you cannot subtract matrices that are different orders. So we're going to say not possible. And of course, trying this on a graphing calculator would reveal just that. It might give you an error or something, but it doesn't work because of the orders there.